Diane. Council Member Jackson. Here. Council Member Silva. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Vegas Walker. Here. Mayor Solomon. Here. And Council Member Sanders. Here. We'll have the Pledge of Allegiance by Mr. Silva and vocation by Mrs. Walker. Please join me saluting our flag. Ready and begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please bow your heads and remain standing. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for our many blessings. Please help us to be ever mindful for all of those things that give our life meaning, that give our life purpose, many things for which we should be so grateful. Help us to be ever mindful of that. We ask this day a very special blessing on our leaders in Washington. Please help them to do their job. Please soften their hearts so that they can listen to one another, that they can talk with one another, that they can compromise, that they can concur, and they do the one thing that we ask them to do, which is to lead. Please be with them. These things we pray in my precious name. Amen. We'll now have the city attorney's report from closed session. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. On a motion by Councilmember Jackson, second by Councilmember Sanders, the City Council met in closed session at 5.32 p.m. All council members were present with Councilmember Silva arriving at 5.35 p.m. A report was given to council on the anticipated litigation item. There is no action to report, but direction was given to staff. Council met with its labor relations negotiators, Ruben Duran, City Manager, and Terry Brownlee, Human Resources Director, concerning labor matters to, uh, relating to the units listed on the City Council's agenda. Leticia Salcido, Finance Director, also participated in the report. There is no action to report, but direction was given to staff. Council discussed the employment agreement of the Fire Chief, and there is action coming out of closed session with respect to this item. Closed session concluded at 6.07 p.m., and that concludes my report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Upon the presentations and announcement, Leticia Salcido, can you come on down? We have a certificate of achievements for excellent in financial reporting presented to the city of El Centro. Thank you for another year of outstanding work. We should probably change the name of this particular award and just name it after you. <laughs> but I think Yes. <laughs> I've been here eight years, and I think every year I've been here, you've gotten this award for outstanding work. And that just goes to show you what a dedicated employee that you must be, and you are. Thank Anyone you. else? Holy Moses. Yes. Yes. Are they going to have to reinforce the, the wall? Thank you. Oh my gosh. Yes. Thank you very much. Congratulations. It has been my pleasure. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, here's the last. Just one thing, this is, I received the award, but it's on behalf of my team and my staff, and they're us here with me, and I just want to thank them because they worked so hard throughout the year to make this happen. Good. Thank you. Mayor. Leticia, could we have you and your staff, staff come staff. forward, please? Yes, yeah, yeah. we can. Could you come up? As well, they're coming up. Uh, I, the reason I came to the podium, uh, having been a finance director in, your, in my career also, these awards are not given away, and I believe we're the only one in the county. But this is what this award says. It means that this city believes the importance of financial transparency and accountability is, is required, and it is a high level of standard. Uh, so I, IBC may have this. I wouldn't be surprised if you did have it. Uh, it was similar to it. But it requires a great deal of public notice and public input, and the transparency must occur. So I want to thank the department because this is difficult. I only earned one in my career, and uh, it is, it's hard to do. So congratulations to all of you. Great deal of work. Let's get a photograph. Thank you. 
Yeah. Oh, you're not done yet. Come on. Patichi, would you please ask each member of your staff to um, give us their name and their job title and how long they've been with the city, and then we do have some remarks. My name is Luisa Castro. I do payroll for the City of El Centro, and um, I work for finance, of course, Leticia. I have been working with the City of El Centro. I uh, was hired in October 1999. 1999, 14 yes. years. Okay, next. Uh, my name is Maria Frazier, and I'm in the finance department, accounts payable. I've been with the city 30 years. Amen. Amen. My name is Carla Chaparro. I'm the accounting specialist, and I've been with the city for four years. Hi, I'm Yvonne Obeso. I'm a financial assistant. I've been with the city since January 2003. Uh, Richard Romero, finance manager, in December 28 years. Wow. Wonderful. I, I wanted an opportunity to thank all of you. And I think this is a monumental recognition. But each of you needs to know what a tremendous impact you have, not only on the city of El Centro, but on this entire community. The fact that we have a balanced budget, the fact that we have this transparency, the fact that we have no ongoing audit issues, the fact that we were able to sustain the worst economic downturn that any of us have ever had the misfortune of experiencing, and yet not lay off a single employee, retain a balanced budget, and put aside healthy reserves. We are the most fiscally sound city that I'm aware of in the state of California. We've, we've made tremendous strides with regard to covering our post-retirement obligations. And it's because of you and your hard work that we all benefit. And I just want to personally thank you, each and every one of you, and congratulate all of you on receiving that award. Thank you. You're here. <clears throat> and and I, I, I very much uh, echo those comments, but I do want to point out that both uh, Maria and Richard, there were 10 when they started with the city. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, I, um, I was wondering why Ms. Connor would not just take a single shot of Ms. Salcido and make it a cover girl shot. I mean, we certainly deserve that. Just put it on the cover of our next uh, paper that we send out. I think I don't it's. Think so. to add up all of the years as they identified their names and the number of years. It's so over 86 years, 86 years of service, combined service to the city of El Centro and finance. You know, I, um, I took accounting some time ago and it was hard for me to just do a balance sheet. So I can appreciate the work and the effort and the energy required to do the job that you do. And I want to echo the sentiments that was espoused by Ms. Walker in saying, Congratulations to all of you. Job well done. Yes, job well done. You know, they say that people that are in finance generally don't make uh, very good, um, have very good relations with other people. They, they kind of keep to themselves and <laughs> most people dislike them. Uh, but I noticed with this group here that is not the case. Here in the city of El Centro, everybody loves seeing you coming because they think to themselves, Maybe there will be bonuses at the end of the year that they can find. You know, there's a hidden agenda for everyone. And so uh, we look at you with a smile on our face. So I just want you to know I'm smiling now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Consent agenda. Hold on, hold on. We have a scheduled public comment. Items appearing under this section uh, submitted a written request to the city clerk. 
That's what I'm getting ready to do. Oh, I'm sorry. A minimum of one week prior to the regular meeting. This is a presentation by Bob, Barbara Spoonauer, Director of Energy and Environmental Programs, the Western Riverside Council of Government, regarding the California HEROES. That, and HEROES stands for Home Energy Renovation Opportunity Program. Ms. Spoonful, Ms. Spoonauer. Thank you, Mayor, City Council members. I'm Barbara Spooner. I'm the Director of Energy and Environmental Programs for the Western Riverside Council of Governments, and I'm here to provide you with a broad overview of the California HERO program. That's volume. Up. Next. Volume. Next. Sorry. Up. Not working. Sorry. My trusty assistant here will uh, push the buttons for me. <laughs> Point it up and use this one. Point it up and... Should, oh, it looks like it's locked up. Yeah, yeah. yeah it looks good. Like okay. Sorry about that. Uh, the California HERO program is a residential and commercial uh, property assessed clean energy program. In 2008 and 2009, uh, Governor Schwarzenegger uh, passed law that allows for jurisdictions to create financing districts to finance energy efficiency, water conservation, and renewable energy projects. And that, refin that financing is paid back through a line item on the property tax uh, for property owners who participate. Next. Uh, our California HERO program really is based off of what we've done in Western Riverside County. I have 17 cities in the county that participate in our program, and we found that regional and statewide programs create economies of scales when it comes to financing programs. And this is, again, it's just a financing option that's available. We opened our program to avoid duplication. Uh, we realized jurisdictions can create their own programs. Uh, it took us several years and millions of dollars to put our program into place. And we figured we got a lot of calls from contractors and cities wanting to know how can we participate and not take on that additional burden of creating our own. So we found a way to open our program up. Next. Uh, benefits to property owners and to jurisdictions. Again, it's just a financing mechanism, so it's another option that's available to property owners. So when their air conditioning breaks or their water heater breaks and their contractor comes out and lays out how they can pay for the, their improvement that they need, this is just another option that's available to them. Uh, for jurisdictions, if you're looking to create jobs or retain jobs, it does that. It's done that really well in Western Riverside. If you're looking at an environmental side from needing to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, uh, we are able to calculate those so that you can track those through your climate action plans and help you with your AB 32 requirements. Uh, it just some examples of what uh, improvements are financed. Uh, when you hear PACE, most people hear solar, and that's all they think that you can finance. But this really is energy efficiency and water conservation as well. So you're looking at your HVAC systems, your windows, doors, insulation, uh, outside, inside, outside irrigation, uh, tankless water heaters. So there's a whole host of things. They do need to meet Energy Star, Title 24, and Water Sense. Next. Uh, as a result of what we've done in Western Riverside, uh, through the beginning of the month, uh, for year to date, we've approved over 11,000 applications for $360 million. We've actually completed uh, over 5,500 projects for $94 million. Uh, so we are the largest PACE program in the United States. Types of projects that are being funded, again, it's not just a solar program. Solar is only about 38, 40% of what we do. A lot of it is the windows, doors, uh, HVAC systems, property owners, uh, residential and commercial understand that if they do the energy efficiencies first, then they can get a smaller solar system. And so thus they're saving money on their, their energy side and not spending as much on their solar. Uh, we've done economic impacts. Uh, we're able to provide this data to the jurisdictions that participate. Uh, so this just gives you a snapshot. We did, for every dollar spent in our program, 2.78 comes back is either induced or indirect uh, economic effects. So our 95 million actually is 30, 336 million coming back into our community because the contractors needing to buy lunch, gas, having uh, 
material shipped in and shipped out of the area. Next. Uh, who qualifies to participate? Uh, they need to be the owner off record. They need to be current on their property taxes and on their mortgage. Uh, they do need to have at least 10% uh, equity in the home, no bankruptcies. And on the commercial, we do require lender consent. And our program report and our handbooks are online so that that gives more detail uh, than what the broad overview is. Again, it's a voluntary program. Uh, a property owner and or contractor can go online. They can find out if they're pretty much instantaneously approved and for how much they can work with their contractor then to get uh, the improvement done. One, we sign an assessment, uh, assessment contract. Uh, once the project's complete, we pay the contractor who has needed to provide us with all of the backup information. And then we place the assessment on the tax roll. Uh, there are costs uh, associated with the program. We do have a one-time upfront administrative fee of 6.95%. That's similar to a closing cost, and that's used to pay back all of the partners that are in the program. We have about eight different partners uh, that, part that work in our program. It's not just WR COG alone. Uh, we have an annual administrative fee, and that's used to pay for putting the tax, putting the tax, getting the tax, the assessment onto the tax roll each year, uh, so that pay, making sure that we cover the county fees. Uh, we offer 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 year uh, us terms, and the interest rates go from 5.95 to 8.95 percent. The, uh, the 6.95 percent administration fee is based on the total cost of the product project? Yes. Okay. Uh, contractors to us are key for promoting the program because it is, they're the ones that have their boots on the ground. We have over 1,200 to participate in the program. We do ask them to register uh, with us so that we can check their license, make sure that they're bonded and insured, make sure that they are uh, adhering to the terms and conditions and representing our program and telling the property owners the correct information. Because the last thing I want, or any of uh, my boss, or his elected officials want is your constituents calling you in the middle of the night complaining. Um, so we work diligently with our contractors to keep them uh, on the up and up. Uh, how do jurisdictions join the California HERO program? We try to make it as simple as possible. Uh, all jurisdiction needs to do is adopt a resolution of participation. Uh, within that resolution is an amendment to append yourselves to Western Riverside Council of Governments as an associate uh, member. And we did that because we could have easily went out and just partnered with Riverside County and created a California JPA. And, but if you pulled back the layers, it would, you would just see WRCOG as being overseeing the program. So in light of transparency, we thought it'd be, let's just call it what it is, it's WRCOG's JPA. So that's why we went that direction. We do go through a validation process. Uh, so we validate with the courts to make sure that we're in uh, compliance with AB 811. And it takes us about three to four months to launch after a jurisdiction adopts its resolution. There's no jurisdictional uh, staff time really required other than processing the permits that come through on a daily basis. Uh, we actually now have 47, actually 49 jurisdictions as of today uh, that have joined. Uh, recently, the city of Brawley took action and adopted a resolution, and I gave a presentation last night to the city of Holtville, and they indicated that they will be moving forward in the future. And we're currently working with uh, Transportation Commission, Mark, uh, to make sure, see if we can be the point of contact for the subregion. We understand that in, in large programs, you like to have that regional feel, you know, someone who's close to home. Um, so we've re reached out to the Transportation Commission and really appreciate uh, everything that he's done in helping us. And I believe that's it, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. And I think Mark. As Councilmember Sanders is aware, uh, we had a strategic plan at ICTC to pursue non-transportation programs and and as I was doing my research about potential programs and and uh, met with uh, Rick Bishop, uh, the executive director of WR COG and, and they and shared their program. We also had a uh, we're aware that Coachella Valley Association of Governments has their program. We felt this was a way for us to, for this region, to pursue it with an established organization that 
has been at it for a couple of years now and, and a, an established program that we could just be a part of and then what we could do is just reach out to our communities and see if they would be interested in pursuing this. We feel that uh, it is a great opportunity for our homeowners and our business owners in, in this community. We also expect to uh, partner with IBEDC uh, to reach out to the business, the contractor community, communities about their participation and being a, a certified uh, contractor as part of this. So we think some job opportunities are, are ahead of us in, in that way. I'll say this has been really exciting. We've seen the home um, program showcased at the General Assembly at the Southern California mm -hmm. Association of Governments, and I think that's when I first became aware of the program. And it, you've experienced some tremendous success over the last couple of years, and you're to be commended. So the next uh, phase for us, Mr. Baza, would be Is to consider it, it, adoption it, of a resolution to yes. move this forward? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and that would be uh, the case. It would be coming back to you a subsequent meeting for your consideration of the resolution, and then that is it. Our housing staff, along with the community development folks, will work with making sure it gets advertised. But ITC, uh, you can see, will be instrumental since most of the cities, I think, will be signing up for this. Uh, Raleigh's already done it. Hopeville's getting ready to do it You're here. I think you'll see all the cities, and hopefully the county will sign on to this. Uh, it's not a cure-all. It's one more tool for us to help people keep their, keep, stay in their homes. I, I noticed that the San, the San Diego County was one of the agencies. Correct. Is there the thought that Imperial County as a standalone jurisdiction would also be adopting a resolution? Yes. Okay. We've, we've, we've had some extensive discussions with Andy Horn and uh, okay. CEO about that and we expect to be going to them shortly. And, and given, given the size of the county, and uh, the, the fact that we all work very well together regionally, I think that this would be a tremendous opportunity for us to have some joint meetings to share mm -hmm. the information as it's moving forward. So this is very exciting. Yeah. Well, Mr. Mayor, if I may, I have a question. Um, refresh my memory, please, Mr. Vaza, as it relates to the interface, if any, with IID. Um, we will certainly be in contact with IID about any overlap in programs that they may have. And we have had an initial conversation with IID staff at, at management committee about that. And so we'll, we'll want to make sure that we're, we're not duplicating uh, services or opportunities. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Silver. First of all, thank, thank you. This is pretty exciting, I think. Uh, this is one of those things that when you, I look at it on the surface, it's like, oh, this sounds too good to be true. Uh, it really is. But so, I, so in order for me to understand it fully, um, so wh wh when someone applies and gets approved for this, where, where does the money come from? Is it, come, is it coming from here or California, or is it through? So, uh, we that's, a, that's a lot of money that you've lent out already. Yes. We have two funding partners, Renovate America is our residential funding partner, Psalmist uh, Capital is our commercial funding partner, and WR Cogs the bond issuer. We, we issue limited obligation bonds to our funding partners and then they do private placement. And we are getting ready to do an aggregate to take out into the market, uh, hopefully in January. A securitization. So is there a cap to that funding availability or no. you, you'll be able to serve as many people as? Well, well the, the uh, markets are huge. Um, so we have a lot of potential, especially as we go through the securitization and we do an open market to, to really build capacity, not only for our region, but for the rest of the state and other programs. Okay. The, the upfront administrative fee. So that, uh, when I read that, that meant to me that whoever's applying for this, they'll have to come up with the cash to it, pay that administrative fee? It is wrapped into the finance. It's wrapped into the finance. Yes, okay. uh, similar to closing costs. Okay, and, and some of these things are, are like, when I saw the air conditioning, you know, those are things that typically require pretty quick response time to be able to fix that, especially here. So what, what's the response time when somebody applies for one of these projects? to get the money and get the work done? 
it, it generally takes, we work really closely with our contractors and we pay our contractors every two weeks. So a project can go in in a matter of days once the permit's pulled for, if there's a permit required for whatever work that's being required, they do need to pull that and provide proof of that upon completion of the project. But they can get a project in within days. And finally, on those jurisdictions where you have this already up and running, what kind of um, outreach or marketing do you do to publicize this? So really we work a lot with the contractors because they are the boots on the ground and getting them trained. And so within the areas during that four month period of where the, the adoption occurs in the launch, we work with outreaching to the contractor community, making sure they fully understand the program, getting them registered. Because really we want to see home property owners, residential and commercial, you know, taking advantage of their own local contractors. So we hire people to work within the areas to work side by side with the contractor or the contractors, their staff. But we are willing to do public uh, outreach events and provide information. For the city, we would provide information for the counter uh, along with the Transportation Commission. If the city wanted to have a banner on their website or anything, we could have that designed. So the city can be as involved or uninvolved as it wants to be, and we will be happy to make whatever marketing materials you'd like for your city. And marketing materials in this region are typically bilingual, uh, mm -hmm. Spanish, English? That, that is what we are striving for, because I have a lot of communities in the LA area that are more uh, Korean and Vietnamese, so we're, we're moving in the direction of getting all of the bilingual materials together. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Consent agenda items are approved by one motion. Council members or members of the public may pull consent items to be considered separately at a time determined by the mayor. Mr. Jackson, you have anything you want to pull? I'm just wondering if, um, Grace, do you want item eight pulled? And I see Mr. Sanders is here. Does he want to give an update on item number eight? I'll go ahead and pull item number eight. Number eight, okay. Mr. Silva? I'll make a motion to Ms. approve. Mr. Walker? Oh, I'm sorry. Ms. Sanders? No. I'll move for items uh, three through seven and items item number nine for approval. Second. It's been a motion by Mr. Jackson, second by Ms. Sanders. Please vote. Motion carries five zero. Just because we're so excited about this project, I thought yes, yes. we would give uh, Ms. Sanders an opportunity to show it off. Yes. Thank you, uh, Mayor and Council Members. We are ready to go out to bid for the Council Chambers renovation project. This is Jimmy Sanders, our uh, architect for the project. He has a timeline and a slide and can answer any questions. Thank you. This is the... Uh, same presentation as far as the layout goes, the floor plan and the elevation that we presented uh, a few months back. So as a, as a reminder and just to answer any questions that you have about the scope of the project. So there's our, uh, our floor plan. It includes uh, uh, 53 seats with the new dais uh, along this uh, north wall. We have a new emergency exit door. Um, the recessed floor will be uh, infilled and we will be uh, flat and the dais will be raised of uh, 14 inches. Uh, all new architectural finishes, all new uh, electrical uh, and mechanical also. Any questions on, on, uh, on our scope? Uh, this is a uh, elevation. Uh, the north wall and then a section of the of the building so uh, that's looking from this this top one here looking from the uh, from the public up at the up at the dais those are actually 90 inch, uh, TVs or flat panel uh, monitors there behind uh, behind the dais there's 11 uh, uh, seats on the dais so that you can have the the joint uh, joint workshops and this is a section of uh, 
cutting in the north-south direction so you can see the the line of sights from the worst seat in the house uh, which would be all the way in the front here uh, the, these seats here as far as uh, being able to to view the the, the flat panels uh, there on the north wall essentially we've we've refined the contract documents re and refined the scope uh, but from from the last or from the first presentation that we did and uh, for for approval the the scope of the project has not changed and finally our our project schedule proposed project schedule we're advertising the 24th and the 7th with a pre-bid conference on Monday November the 12th um, I believe that's Tuesday the 12th though yeah Monday's a holiday yeah so Tuesday November the 12th uh, bid deadline on November the 26th with a council uh, award at the December 17th council meeting and we're set to begin construction about January 6th and that would be de depend on how long it takes to push back and forth all the contract documents and for them to start but somewhere around uh, January 6th to the to the 20th they would start construction. <coughs> Mr. Mr. Sanders, our um, agenda packet indicates construction begins in January and completes in July. So we have about six, seven months. Six month uh, time okay. period, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then during that period of time, we'll be meeting at the old post office pavilion. And and I think um, the the planning process for the task force, you've made it remarkably easy. Mm -hmm come up with some really really great ideas and graces as the project sponsor of this you've done an excellent job I would like you to talk a little bit about the funding source so that you know, people are clear that this is not a general fund expenditure um, can you address that please? this project is coming from the public facilities fund which is local fees that are paid through various sources for impacts of various projects in the area. There is a, we have put in a contingency of 30% because of the age of the building and some different asbestos that we found in different areas and the foreseen work that may be here. Although we do project the bid to come in um, around 800,000. We don't project it to be any higher than that. Are we anticipating impacts to any of the other buildings here that will the restrooms be affected will in there will be a brief time where they're going to have to the wall that joins this building and the restroom building will have to be closed we'll put a portable some portable restrooms in the parking lot similar to what we did when we were renovating these restrooms part of that mayor council if I interject will mitigate it because the uh, terminal will be open by then and so much of the population that is coming through here won't be here. Please, he's talking about the transit. Yes. About the, the transit terminal. Good timing for those projects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, and, and I thought another reason why we, we're doing this is to improve uh, ADA accessibility, correct? Yes, we have um, included ramps on both sides rather than stairs on one and a ramp on the other. We'll just have ramps on both sides, an extra exit. There's more space in between the seating. We've added aisles. Um, some also some ADA compliant seating if we did have a larger event where we needed more seating we can all there is enough room to put extra folding chairs on the sides in the middle things like that mm -hmm. I, I noticed that in the slides I saw a person in a wheelchair mm -hmm. <laughs> that was to demonstrate the ADA compliant aspect yes, yes. thank you <laughs> yes. Did you think that was you? Yes, <laughs> uh, Ms. Connor, could you also give a, a short, a brief update on where we're at with the old, old post office because that needs to be open before construction can start here. Ma maintenance is doing an in-house project to do some maintenance, well not maintenance, some additives to the old post office. We're closing up some walls that had been open for, that used to be a catering kitchen. We, and then we're closing off some walls that used to be a postmaster's mail pickup. We're buying some seating. Doing, we're adding some lighting so that it's not so dark in that room. And we are painting. There's also going to be a dais built. 
Yes, we are going to build a one foot dais so the council's not on a four foot stage. four foot stage. stage and then everybody else is on a regular chair. There'll also be a new sound system. And when we're done with all this, all these improvements, by the way, needed to be done because it made the restrooms completely ADA. Uh, these are projects that we did not finish when we did the update before. Uh, but the dais would remain as a portable. It could be pulled up and stored. And the sound system will stay. And all this, uh, the chairs, because we're always moving chairs back and forth between the community center. These 100 chairs will stay there as part of that. Uh, once we have, we're up and operational with the planning, because we have the planning commission, the council, personnel board, uh, all of our training that goes on here would go over there. We would then, with parks, look at what is available for the public to use that facility in what manner. So it's, we, we need to finish all the, these upgrades. And once we know that it's working for the boards, and other operations, we can look at how it's going to work for the public. But when, in July, we go back to being what the old, pop, old post office was before, including all the upgrades, all the better lighting. The, they never had a sound system. So it winds up with a sound system. So there's a number of benefits that uh, we get out of this. Is that included in this budget? No. Or we, we have separately paid for that. A, there'll be an ancillary budget to, to deal with the old post office upgrades. Right. Okay, we, then we, the, we've done that as a pay as you can go. We've already got that actually financed. Okay, with. then the, the other question is because of its historic designation, uh, what are the restrictions on what we can or cannot do? Is it we won't be doing anything that um, violates the historical act. I've checked with the building department on everything we've done, and he's also on part of the committee for that as well. Okay. We're also adding another exit. So when you first walk into the post office, you can go straight through, and that will serve as our emergency exit instead of our emergency exit actually going through the postman's right. area. Mm -hmm. We're also fixing some safety issues such as transitions and the entrance, the rear entrance, adding some metal fencing so you don't drop off into <laughs> to where they used to drop the off mail. Dock the loading, the loading dock. dock, yes. yes. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I have a question. And the question is, is um, Perhaps Grace can answer, or I'm sorry, Ms. Connor can answer, or either Ms. Villacana. Um, how many members in the Planning Commission? Seven. Six. Seven. How many? Seven. Seven. And we have, for joint meetings, we have 11 seating. That's not seven and five or 12. Uh, did we take that into consideration for every? Because oftentimes we do meet jointly with the members of the Planning Commission. Did you say that uh, there were 11 seats? Mm -hmm. Yes, 11. <coughs> uh, members of the committee, did you think? We did talk about that. We did talk about that. Yeah. Well, I, I, well, that jumped out at me because oftentimes we've, we've met with members of the Planning Commission in particular as it relates to the direction we're going with the city as far as our land use issues. And I thought when we have joint meetings, uh, if there's 11 seats and there's going to be 12 of us, maybe somebody won't come. Well, I think that one, one of the things that we talked about is that maybe this would not be the area if we were having a joint meeting, since uh, uh, oftentimes those are more working discussions with public. could always have those back over at the um, adult center, which it, um, it, I think is a great well, that would, venue, be a, that would be one venue. The old post office would be the, another venue. But if we're going to uh, upgrade this one, we might, on occasion, we've had it here. And some sit out in the audience and some here. I was just wondering, is there an opportunity to, to add one, to yeah, add I, another I think seat? If, if I remember the conversation, Mr. Mr. Sanders might be able to um, enlighten us a little bit. I think we talked about just sliding another chair in because it wasn't something that was going to happen often. And that's, uh, I'm, I'm uh, counting our spaces here. Or maybe I miss... Uh, oh, there's 11. There's 11, but there's the other seat down where the uh, yeah, clerk would be sitting. There's 11 with that, and then, and then there's, a, there's a seat here and a seat there. A seat so here and a seat there. What does that mean? At, at the end at of the each. End. At the so end of there the would dice. be there would be ample space for another chair to come forward. Exactly. All right. Yes. Just since 
Thank you. Where, where within that layout is the mayor's Mr. wall going to go? Thank you. It's not. It's going to go back. It's going to go to the city. Oh, close to oh, oh. Oh, I'm sorry, the photographs you're talking about? Yeah. Oh, yeah, those will be relocated. And, uh, great. Ms. Connor, do you recall? I thought we were taking them to the library. Oh, that's right. Library. library. Yeah, you're right. Well, we plan to have the city logo in the back with, right. in God We Trust. Right. Yeah. That was adopted the, by the, the council. Mayor's oh, the mayor's pictures. Mayor's. I thought we were sending those to the library to increase traffic there. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, I think there's one where we'd, we'd want to have a discussion. Should it be the lobby or the other building, the library? But the point is, there will be a home for that also. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Thanks a lot. This is Dave Tanya. Thank you very much for that information. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Jimmy. Approval, yes, uh, with that, I'll move uh, for approval of item number eight. Second. Motion by Mr. Jackson, second by Ms. Walker. Please vote. Motion carries 5 0. New business. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Very excited. Thank you, sir. Upon the new business, we have discussion and any necessary action regarding AT&T proposed amendment to conditional use permit number 10-08 AT&T communication tower located at 763 West Main Street, Norma Via Kanya, AICP. Thank you. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and members of the uh, City Council. As you may recall, uh, at our last meeting of September 17th, uh, direction was given to staff uh, regarding the AT&T project over at 763 West 8th Street. Um, after that meeting, uh, staff did have a conference call with AT&T team members, and we were advised that a application to amend the condition of the requirement to have the facade tower uh, will be coming in uh, to the city. Uh, we did discuss several uh, issues regarding any changes of the project. One of them was, as we all know, it has to comply in conformance with uh, project shape. Uh, mitigation, uh, there has to be a nexus to the mitigation, whatever they're proposing. So we did have a lengthy discussion about that. Now, as of last week, uh, we have not received an application. I did uh, speak to Mrs. Moore on Friday, and we have scheduled a meeting with AT&T for tomorrow, and uh, included in the meeting would be our economic development director and also our senior engineer to go over to see what they are proposing. So at this time, we're not, we don't have anything on file. Any questions from well, the early, Earlier today in this meeting, we approved the minutes of our regular meeting of September 17th. And at that time, AT&T made the representation that they were in agreement to continue to move forward with the current approved project by pulling a building permit by mid-October. Mid -October. And in addition, pursue with city staff an option for off-site mitigation to be presented to city council for their review and direction on October 15th. So this is October 15th. Okay. They failed to pull the permit as they said that they would do. Mm -hmm. And they're not here um, to give us the option for offsite mitigation. So both things that they told us that they would do in mm -hmm. September, they failed to perform either. That's correct. W would this be the pro if, if they have, if, if there's, um, New mitigation proposed. Mm -hmm. Would they come to us? Yeah. They, would, it would, it would, they wouldn't come to us initially, right? To present, they would have yeah. to go. They'd go to the planning commission yeah, for, the for for the operational piece of it. You to follow the process, the governance process. Correct. However, the agreement was that they would continue to keep us updated. Mm. That they would pull pull the building permit, and uh, here we are again with another failed promise. And uh, we did discuss the, that the, we did advise them that the building permit was ready to be issued. Um, so they are aware, at and is aware of that. Um, I think what they were looking from us, from staff, was more 
uh, of a direction as to which direction they should take, and we did advise them that we could not, you know, do that, that they needed to submit their proposal at that time. It would be reviewed by staff and go through the process of the application process. Because if, when someone pulls a permit, it doesn't mean that they have to start work right away. So what is, could, could cost be a motivating factor for not pulling the permit? Because I presume that when they pull the permit, they would have to pay a permit fee? Mm -hmm. Yes. How much, how much is that permit fee? If I can refer to Mr. Sota, do you remember? Uh, no, I do not. Okay. Uh, it's probably, uh, it's not, it's not a lot because it's a tower. No. It's probably a couple thousand dollars. A couple thousand uh -huh. dollars. Ms. Ms. Biacanya, one of, one of the questions that I would be interested, you said the meeting is tomorrow? Yes. One of the questions that I would be interested in knowing is where in other jurisdictions have they taken, what is it now, five years to get around to constructing something that they've promised a community? Yeah. In what other community have, have they been allowed to operate this way where um, they're issued a conditional use permit and then not move mm -hmm. forward with the project? I'd also like to know in what other community have they proposed mitigation measures, um, off-site mitigation, and then allowed to add to an existing tower structure uh, adjacent to downtown. Okay. And, and I think a, a very valid point is, is that they did um, commit to pull the permit, and, and so if the cost I mean, I could see if it was a very substantial cost where the people might want to step back and see what happens, but if it's not that substantial, I, I do think that they need to uh, follow through on their, on their um, commitment to pull the permit uh, and, and then proceed with those. Like I said, I don't, I don't have a problem reevaluating the options as long as the, um, the, the new mitigation is, is proportional to the new tower. Um, and I can see why they would want to see where they go before they start much into this. But as I said, uh, this has to happen quickly. We can't we can't be waiting for you know a year to get this moving. Nova, any mm -hmm. indication from your discussion with uh, Ms. Moore on Friday why they hadn't pulled the permit yet? Was there any discussion about that, or is it? Or were they, re were they meeting, or were they waiting to meet with you again, or meet with city staff before they did that, or? I think what uh, the the what I got from our from my conversation with Ms. Moore was that they were waiting to see if council would embrace their their mit what their proposal. However, you know, I did inform them that it has to go to planning commission and council before before it's evaluated by city council. So I think they felt that they would be able to bring a proposal before you and you get your blessings and then move forward with that proposal. So, so uh, and you explained to her that that's that, yeah, not that we, the way. Yeah, we can't do that. Uh -huh. Okay, and so yes. she understands it. She understands that now, and again, when we when I meet with her tomorrow, that's going to be part of our conversation too. Okay. The process uh, of amending the application. And what's the timeline on on the permit that you have currently is ready for her to be pulled, mm -hmm. or for AT and T to be pulled? Mm -hmm. That's something that can be done even tomorrow. Yes. Okay. And any indication from her if that's something they are planning on doing tomorrow? No indication from her. Okay. For clarification of the two meetings back, because I was on the first meeting, is uh, made it very clear after some discussion with them about this mitigation, it is their responsibility to demonstrate to the Planning Commission uh, in their application how that mitigation, whatever it is, mitigates the, the, pro the problem. So it's not a matter of money, it's a matter of how, what is the linkage? And that's when the discussion is, well, what does the city think? Said, that is not our role. And by the way, one of our, our previous staff member offered something once to them and they ran with it and said, well, the city's requiring us to build a uh, uh, clock tower. Well, we reminded them that you need to, the applicant needs to not only come up with the mitigation, but also how it mitigates. And uh, we're being very careful of not getting uh, bound, bound up in that discussion again of uh, being overly helpful and then being held to some kind of responsibility for the project. Uh, they know how to do this. They mitigate all over the, the United States. 
they deal with it, uh, these issues, they need to bring it to the table and take it to the planning commission. There was a discussion about having council involved. We reminded them, and I believe their attorney who was on the phone mm -hmm. agreed that uh, getting ahead of the planning commission is inappropriate with the council because the planning commission needs to hear this separately. Right. If that's the direction they wind up going or they pull their permit. So again, this, this is not a unique situation, so I'm very curious to hear how AT&T has handled it in other, sure, other jurisdictions. I can report back after my meeting tomorrow and let you know. Thank you, Ms. Mm -hmm. Vivian. You're welcome. Item 11, discussion and any necessary action regarding the appointment of a delegate and alternate for the upcoming National League of Cities annual business meeting at the conclusion of the Congress of Cities and Exposition in Seattle, Washington, November the 13th through the 16th. I guess the first question is, do we have money to go? Mr. Mayor, I, uh, it is my intentions to attend. Uh, I will be able to, uh, I will be seeing my physician on the 7th, and it is, um, I have high hopes that that, uh, that meeting will give me uh, the green light so that I could uh, make a trip uh, of this magnitude, uh, and, and so I do intend to, to attend. So I'm willing to volunteer to be your delegate. Is there an alternate and is there money? There is money? Okay. Do we? I'm not going. I, I'm unable to attend. Um, Ms. Caldwell, when is the uh, application due? This, uh, the application for the delegate and the alternate? The 31st. Ooh. That's coming mm -hmm. up. Um, would, would the council entertain me being listed as an alternate and then me checking back with mm -hmm. um, sure. Ms. Caldwell with regard to, I'd, I'd like to know more about the cost and that sort of thing. Are you okay with that? Sure. Yeah. So does this require a council, a council action? Yes. Yes. So I would move that uh, we uh, nominate Ms. Sanders as our delegate and Ms. Walker as our alternate. Second. Motion carries 5 0. Item 11A. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor, this might be the right, uh, an appropriate time to deal with the item coming out of closed session. Yes. Yes. Do you have a motion to add that to the agenda or just, uh, we're just taking it? No, we just, we'd just take it. I'll motion for that. <laughs> to add an item, resolution 13 97. 97. Can I? I'll, I'll second. Motion by Mr. Jackson, second by Ms. Walker. Please vote. Motion carries 5 0. Ms. Becker, you want to? Did you want to talk about that? Thank you, resolution. Would you like to read the resolution? Just resolution. Do you want someone to read it? Resolution of the City Council of the City of El Centro establishing the compensation and employment terms for the Fire Chief Director of the Disaster Services. I'd move approval of resolution number 13 97. 97. Second. Second. It's been a motion by Ms. Walker, second by Mr. Jackson. Please vote. Motion carries 5 0. And for those who are available, to, uh, tomorrow at 9 o'clock, there is a pinning ceremony at Fire Station 3. It's 830. 830. 830. 830. Yeah. Well, that's okay, too. He'll be there. <laughs> it's at 830. Uh, for pinning the ceremony. benefit of those in the audience, because that was kind of a cryptic uh, resolution, would you like to make the formal one? Yes. Uh, I'd like to announce uh, the appointment, uh, approval of Fire Chief Ken Herbert. Uh, for the El Central Fire Department, the city of El Central. It's been a long time coming. And Ken, why don't you just come on down? You're, 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 you're on a pink t-shirt and all. 
while he's coming down, uh, we've been in, in a two-year process, and uh, it's it's been an experience for all of us in this process, and I think we've all been better for the process. So, uh, Chief? Thank you. Chief, good ring. Chief. <laughs> uh, uh, I wasn't really prepared to come up, but uh, thank you, appreciate it. Um, I know that I've got a challenge and an opportunity in front of me, and it's nothing that I take lightly. lightly. Um, I hope to see you all tomorrow. So I'll have some more eloquent words prepared for you. You have a speech written? Yeah. yeah. Well, wait, I want to do like your first August speech. All right. <laughs> I'll save my hope for tomorrow. <laughs> I, I just want to say, you know, congratulations, Ken. I, I think a uh, long time coming. Um, and I think uh, you're going to do a great job running our city fire department. And I think you have the respect and, and the leadership of the men that you'll be uh, serving. So I think uh, we're looking for good things out of the city fire department. Very cool. Still, do you have anything? Congratulations. No, uh, congratulations. I'll be there tomorrow. I'll give you my hug tomorrow as well. <laughs> I think sometimes we forget that there are people that are around us that help to shape us and move us in the right direction. And I think in your case, in Eddie's case, I think the chief has done a great job of doing that and setting you up for success. And I think that uh, he should also be recognized and applaud for the work that he's done. That was Chief McGinley. That was uh, being recognized. Yes, thank you, Chief. And uh, now you get to go. Now you get to go back to. Uh, they're going to make you give up your chief's pin. <laughs> okay, item item 11A: discussion and any necessary action regarding the establishment of an animal control task force. Cheryl and I sat on the animal control task force for a year and at the end of the year we kind of... Um, well, we, we were kind of in a holding pattern while the county moved forward with its uh, comprehensive evaluation of animal control issues from uh, detention to hold, holding to spay neutering how we can form like more collaborative private-public partnerships with regard to animal control issues and maybe coming up with a regional solution. We did have the opportunity to meet with the County of Imperial that did a comprehensive presentation as to that regional plan. I believe, Mr. Duran, you were there. Uh, Ms. Birdsall from the uh, police department was there. Representatives from all of the cities, I, I think ex with maybe one exception. and. Um, it was probably one of the best plans I've ever seen a consultant put together with regard to a single issue. Mm -hmm. And what was really exciting is that uh, it's all doable. If we come together as a region, I truly believe that we have a master plan for animal control issues throughout the entire valley. Um, I did have an opportunity since bringing this up a couple of weeks ago, I did have an opportunity to talk with Supervisor Terrasas and also the County Council, um, Mr. Mike Rood. And I don't know, um, Mr. Duran, if you had an opportunity to talk with the County CEO, but I was thinking that perhaps if the city moved forward with establishing this Animal Control Task Force, we could look to other cities to join us along with the county to move the uh, consultant study off of the shelf and forward. So I would, I would like uh, to see if there's support on this council to do that. I would support that. There's support, but I, I, I have some questions. I know that um, uh, Ms. Walker, I had attended some of those meetings in your behalf earlier on. Uh, but what I wasn't able to glean from the discussion at the time was a location for housing and the cost, and whether or not we enter into a joint powers agreement. If, if, if I recall, there was talk about being able to form um, a district as the funding mechanism, which would provide not only the initial, but also the ongoing funding well into the future. With regard to siting, they have talked about a central location and maybe smaller um, 
call them outposts right. for feeding. So if we had a, a central location, whether it's down near where the current animal facility is for the county or somewhere else, maybe more centrally located within the county, but then maybe some holding areas um, in the outlying areas that would feed into a more centralized uh, facility. There would be some kind of shared governance structure mm -hmm. that would encompass the county as well as the, uh, the seven cities. I believe that that's correct, Mr. Duran. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was very comprehensive. For example, the outpost, the idea is to hold the animal near where it's found for several days so that individuals can pick up their, uh, their pets and get them back rather than making a trek across the county. Uh, and then after se uh, several days, it would be transported to the main facility and still held for several more days. Uh, a very comprehensive report and with addressing the issues of, while not specific location, the idea of central location and these outposts that would also operate uh, well for the community. And uh, it was a very good report and I think it's just a matter now of let's take the next step and start implementing it. Well, the, we've, we've had also recently three uh, very significant developments that I think kind of bring this to the forefront. One, of course, we have a new nonprofit agency that's been operating for probably four years now, the Spay and Neuter of the Desert Society, mm -hmm. which does low cost or no cost spay and neutering of um, dogs and cats. We have the new dog park that's going to be established up in the city of Imperial. And then we have the Humane Society that's also talking about construction of a new facility. I, don't, I think what we don't want to have happen is for a private agency or a nonprofit group to move forward with a project that maybe the, if those funds were redirected and made part of a, a regional solution um, may be a, a better choice. Mm, so, so the potential here is um, Probably private partnerships with we, spay and neuter and with the Humane Society and so they could be, you talk comprehensive, I hear that word several times over. So in my mind that means it would be not only comprehensive but more inclusive of some exactly. of groups. Absolutely, okay. Ms. Sanders. Absolutely. Okay. Mr. Grand, did you have anything additional? No, I, that's everything. Is there anyone would like to be on the task force? Ms. Marker, you've, you've, um, you've got quite a head start in this. So I, would, I would very much like to be a member of the task force. Mm -hmm. Now we need another member, Mr. Sumner. Pardon? Now we need another member. Yes. It can be one. It doesn't have to be two. That's I mean, true. we spread you pretty thin. That's the only. That's true. I, I'm very respectful of the time I ask, we ask of you. Mm -hmm. uh, well, wh what we might be able to do is. Um, Mrs. Walker has already volunteered, and so maybe at our next meeting, Mr. Solomon, there may be everyone would have a chance to look at their schedules and their time constraints, or to see if they have time constraints or time availability, and then be able to add to that at one other person. How about that? That sounds great. Okay. Then we'll leave it like that. I'll take something home with me. I beg your pardon? You take something I'm just afraid that if I join the task force, I'll adopt some cat or dog. And or several. Yeah, or several, yeah. But well, well, be careful what you might get for Christmas, is all <laughs> I can say. But so, um, so we're gonna do we need a vote on Ms. Walker being a member of this task force, or do we, and then when the other person comes forward, we can vote on that I, one as I think, individually? I think what I would, if, if you wouldn't mind taking formal action to establish the task force, and then I think, Ms. Sanders, seeing how successful the Community Enhancement Task Force mm -hmm. has been, maybe our first couple of meetings is strictly with city staff to get our arms around mm -hmm. animal control related issues, and then we move forward with perhaps meeting with the county and the group that we originally had mm -hmm. that debriefed on the consultant's report. Well, I'll move for the formation of a, a task force, animal control task force. Second. Motion by Ms. Sanders, second by Mr. Jackson. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. And the public comments. <coughs> the City Council welcomes your input at this time. Members, of the public may address the City Council on any matter not listed on the posted agenda. Pursuant to the Brown Act, no action will be taken on any items brought forth under public comment. 
please complete a speaker slip and submit it to the city clerk prior to the start of the meeting. Unless the mayor extends the time, there is a three minute time limit for each public presentation. Is there anyone from the public that would like to address the city council? If not, we're gonna go into task force reports. Oh, no, you have to. Well, <clears throat> I am extraordinarily excited to report on the uh, hospital affiliation task force meeting. So the attorney's gonna make sure that I don't breach any kind of confidentiality restrictions that we have in place. Uh, within the last two weeks, the city attorney, uh, city manager, and myself have participated along with a number of representatives from El Centro Regional Medical Center on due diligence visits by groups from San Diego interested in El Centro Regional Medical Center. The meetings have been very comprehensive with upwards of the most recent meeting I think we had I want to say 25, 28, 30, 30 representatives, and it included um, presentation from our site on the hospital, demographics, county information, all kinds of things, um, as well as a full, full presentation on the hospital services. That was followed by presentation by the hospital groups that have come down to visit us on what they bring to the table and uh, their history, mm -hmm. their mission statement, their vision. Um, that's, those meetings were then followed up by field trips, um, both uh, field trips within the hospital and then to the outlying uh, hospital owned, the, the outpatient center, the cancer center and the like. Um, I wanted to share just a couple of excerpts, if I could, from the letter from the Chief of Staff. The El Centro Chief of Staff. Staff. Our Chief of Staff, El Centro Regional Medical Center Chief of Staff. This is dated October 11. This was after uh, the first, um, this was after the first meeting. Um, the presentation was excellent. The suitors were very candid about who they were, what they were looking for and what they would do for e ECRMC if they were chosen. They took all kinds of questions. Um, process for selecting a potential partner is proceeding ahead of schedule and has been well thought out and planned. I am very hopeful and excited about our future. The first group and the group visiting us, and I won't give the date, but are well respected top-notch healthcare leaders, not only in the San Diego area, but nationally. Uh, either one of them would greatly enhance healthcare delivery in Imperial Valley. Please come join us and participate in the process. Um, talked about all kinds of rumors and anxieties about the uncertain future. Let me assure you that as far as I can tell, none of the suitors are corporate raiders. None, none of them are expecting to come in and disrupt um, current contracts scoop patients over the hill. Um, I think that this will be a win-win situation for ECRMC with no downside. And that's from our chief of staff. It's Who all is? been very positive. It's been Who very exciting. Uh, Dr. Leslie Macau. Okay. So that's the uh, task force support there. That's great. It's very exciting. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very exciting. And we have a task force meeting tomorrow at noon. Okay. What about mayor and council members' report? Uh, just one announcement uh, tomorrow, in between all these other meetings I have to do. Um, I'll be trying to get some, uh, spend some time out with the Ronald McDonald House Red Shoe. A fundraiser out on Imperial and Ross Avenue. There'll be several members of the community. I think uh, El Centro and Kiwanis, and then there's some community members out there. So, if you see us on uh, Ross and Imperial, we'll have these red shoes. And please uh, open your wallets and donate to the cause to help the Ron McDonald House in San Diego. 
Mrs. Silva? No report, Mr. Mayor. Really? Ms. Walker? No, nothing to announce? Oh, yes. Yes, <laughs> he has something. Nothing to report? Well, on, on a personal level, um, I, I do have to say that I woke up a little bit heavier a few days ago because I added a piece of jewelry to my to my um, being, and so I have I got married. I'm recently married. I'm very happy, excited, extraordinarily happy. Right. So, so the man gets married. <laughs> you get married on Thursday, and you go to work on Friday. <laughs> I, I'm, I've been waiting all night for him to announce that. I actually <laughs> wanted it at the start of the meeting, but he said no. So um, I, I wanted to commend uh, the fire chief for the open house over at Station Three. I thought that was extraordinary. A lot of a lot of good things happening. A lot of people there. I thought that was very well done. Uh, the mayor and I attended an advisory committee meeting for the Air Pollution Control District. On the 10th of October, there's a number of new rules and regulations that are going into effect that will be presented to the uh, Board of Supervisors. Had the opportunity to work on the host committee and then attend the Harvest Bowl for the Imperial Valley Food Bank on Saturday. Um, did want to remind everyone that the hospital is hosting the chamber mixer coming up uh, this Thursday. Um, Oh, and let's see, the 31st we have a potluck and costume contest here at City Hall, right? Can't wait to see what Ms. Becker comes as. She's <laughs> typically decked out pretty well. Ms. Sand <laughs> Ms. Sanders. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wish to announce once again uh, the <coughs> retirement uh, party that's being hosted by Phyllis Wheatley Temple in Salton Sea Alex Lodge. Uh, honoring your years of service, it'll be held on Thursday, October the 20, I mean, yeah, 24th at the Adult Center in Al Centro from 5.30 to 7. We hope all can join us and you will be able to shake Mr. Solomon's hand and congratulate him on his years of service with the city. Okay, I hate to follow that one. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry, yes. one last, I, I forgot, I did attend the uh, airport commission uh, meeting last week and just to save the day, October 26th is aviation day and um, Save Imperial is uh, also combining a hot wing or a wing, chicken wing cook-off as uh, I guess a signature event that Imperial is going to um, be doing every year in coordination with the Aviation Day. So just save the day, October 26th. I have, Mr. Mayor, I have not been attending the Joint Strike Fighters meetings, and I don't know, Mr. Duran, have you been attending? Uh, no, I have not, and they canceled the last one, as I recall, and uh, it's really been focused around the issue of, of the Aviation Day. Aviation Day, and they're right. going to have um, opportunity for fundraising. They're still trying to uh, obtain some additional funds so they can yeah. advocate strongly for that in, in Washington. But with the, with the stalemate that's currently going on, um, maybe that, that will give us a chance to raise the necessary funds so when the... Yes, and that they, may be coming uh, forthcoming from the committee as a request for some additional funds that yes. they're going back. Uh, they're, unfortunately, they're having to go back to the same, same uh, organizations mm -hmm. uh, to get it to... because it, it's down to the wire, but everything's on hold. Okay then. So let me say what everybody wants to hear. Let's adjourn the meet. <laughs> the meeting is adjourned. Yes. Okay, thank you. Well, I had said nine. I was eight thirty.